Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, I'm going to give my good friend David Adderley a ring. He's just signed for Frank Warren. And I met David uh, when he was in camp as a sparring partner for Huey Fury. And uh, we, ended up, we ended up getting on alright. He uh, did a lot of work with Robin Reed and Peter Fury and did a lot of sparring with Huey and the American guys that Peter Fury brung over and he's a nice guy. So I'm going to give David a ring now. Um, we're going to talk some boxing and how he's come to uh, get with Frank Warren and we're going to have a chat about him because we're going to follow David's career on the channel all the way through so here we go. Oh, it says more well, 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 okay, very well. It says not fucking run your pal, it's not. How you doing, David? <laughs> it's Porky, how you doing? It's Ross. How are you doing, David? Where you been? Anywhere nice? <laughs> I just went to get some food with me. Yeah? Uh, did you watch boxing last night? Say that again. Did you watch the boxing last night? Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. What did you think to it all? Uh, Nathan didn't perform as much as I thought he would, but... I mean, um, Daniel kind of put it on him. Daniel was stronger than I think Nathan anticipated. Yeah, he's a big strong boy, isn't he? Yeah, he is, he is. He kind of, I mean, they were clinching from earlier, I kind of think Daniel, I think Nathan kind of felt Daniel's strong. Yeah. From the get-go. Yeah, he seemed to back, he seemed to uh, back off after he'd been clipped early, didn't he? Yeah, he did, he did, he did. Mm. Have you sparred, Daniel? Yeah. Is he strong? He used to be stable mates, didn't he, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both, both, both for the same club. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Uh, uh, well, let, let, let's uh, now that you've turned pro, then David, and you've gone with Frank, obviously. Let's yeah. back up a little bit, and then we'll start from the beginning. How did you? Uh, how old are you? Obviously, you're called David Adderley. You're from London. You live in West London, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, and how long have you been boxing, David? Um, seven years now. Seven. You so see, you're 22 now, then, yeah. Yeah, I'm 22 now, so I'm sparring last 15. You've been you've been doing it since you were 15, because a lot of boxers they take it up when they're 10, don't they? Yeah, they do. I mean, I was I was a late coming to the game, but I became a national champion pretty early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are you a natural athlete? Were you good at other sports at school, David, and things like that? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to say that. I mean, I was before boxing, I was doing football. I mean, not not. Uh, a good level was doing Sunday League and whatnot, but I was always a fast runner. Yeah, yeah. Did, 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 good genes. Yeah, did you do? Yeah, did you? Did you do hundred meters quick? Um, I think if I was to do hundred meters now, I think I'd probably get about eleven. Eleven seconds. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I 
right. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. And uh, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a massive heavyweight and whatnot, so I am agile. I can run and I can. I see other things. Got a lot of heavyweights now that can normally literally just throw punches if I was doing anything else because they're too big. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when I first met Yui, obviously you were in camp with Peter Fury and got you in camp for Yui, hadn't he? For Yui's fight with uh, yeah. Pulef, wasn't it? Uh, Sam, I mean, you in the yeah, Sexton. I think you did both, didn't you? Yeah, I did both. You did Sexton, the Sexton one, yeah, because Frank used to drive you about, my pal Frank, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I bought his Merc off him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I remember, uh, and you weren't sure, uh, we weren't, sorry, a lot of us weren't sure if you were going to be a cruiserweight if you weren't pro, or if you were going to be a heavyweight, David. Yeah. And you decided to go with heavyweight. I mean, yeah, I could, I mean, the cruiserweight limit was, of course, 91, and um, before that, I tried to make a 91 weight limit, I got to about 92. I kind of struggled with the last kilo and I thought to myself, you know what, I might as well stick a heavyweight. Yeah. So um, I can do more than hold my own against them, so why not? Yeah, and you, and you retain your speed as well, won't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so... Right then, so you've you've gone with Frank Warren. I'm gutted you didn't go with Dennis, because I thought when Dennis, when we were in Bulgaria, I thought we might have had a chance, but Frank's got a bigger platform, he's got more yeah. money and that, and he's uh, he, he's, ri he's riding high, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, he's doing well right now. He's a Hall of Fame promoter. Yeah, he's an Hall of Fame promoter. He's, good. He's, he's, he's doing really good on that, and do you know what? The main thing is that you're happy with your choice and that you've got a good offer because it's a, it's you you're the one in the ring taking the punches. Of course. <laughs> too many people they sign with people and that uh, and they listen to too many people in their ear and all that. But I'm glad I'm glad that you're happy. Were there other people involved? Uh, sorry, in the running to sign you. Yeah, I mean I, I did some other push. I spoke with Dennis and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. People kind of contact me, but um. I mean, I was in no rush at the end of the day. Yeah, you did. You, yeah, you've, pl you've played it out well, haven't you? You've dragged it out a bit because hey, everybody were after you last year and you've, you've took another year, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, that's what I mean. I was in no, I was in no rush. And, and then kind of turned into the pro game. I kind of knew my time would come. It's just a matter of fact of being patient. And yeah. Waiting for the right time. But, I mean, I suppose now is the right time. So, I kind of just took the option with both hands. Yeah, have you have you decided uh, who's going to train you, David? So I'm going to stick with my amateur coach for now, Gavin McGuinness. Gavin McGuinness, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just see how things go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Done me well, so. Yeah, and you've been with him for obviously you've been with him seven years then. Yeah, I've been with him seven years. I mean, he's the person that kind of took me in when I walked through the doors, so um, kind of built me up. Yeah, well, that's good yeah. then because. You know him. He knows what makes you tick, doesn't he? Of course. Of course. And, and is this going to be Gavin's first venture into training pros? Yeah, I mean, he's trained, he's trained a few pros, but as in actually starting from the beginning and then having a pro fighter with him all the way, then yeah, this, this will be his first one. Well, to be honest with you, I kind of admire you for that because you're not going with the normal narrative. You're going your own route, aren't you, both of you? Of course. Of course, of course. So it's basically you two against the system, which is kind of what I like. Yeah. I like anybody who's anti-establishment. I, I I just hope that uh, you're going to be all right. Because how old is Gavin? Is he? Gavin. Gavin's um, Gavin, he's, uh, he's going to be 22 this year. Yeah, he's going to be 22 this year. So yeah. early, early 50s. Oh, so he's not a young, young, young trainer then. So he's got experience yeah. then. Well, that's good then. That's yeah, good. And you've you've just got a degree, haven't you, David? Yes, yeah, so I graduated last year um, in business management, and you know what? That was a bit of a reason for me turning pro, kind of like nowish rather than early. I wanted to kind of finish my educational um, process. I wanted to kind of go through the educational system, get my degree, get everything in my sort of arsenal, and then kind of focus solely on the boxing after that. Yeah. Which is what I've done, thankfully. And you obviously you've got that's your plan B if boxing, if you know, for if something do, if you get injured or something, you know, you yeah, lose interest. That's you, to fall back on, isn't it? Of course. Of that's course, that's of course, good. Of course, it's not a long game. 
No, no, it isn't, mate. You've got to have something to come out of boxing when you finish, haven't you? Exactly, exactly. That's brilliant. That's uh, well, it's all exciting stuff for you, David, isn't it? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, every game has got a new problem, though. So yeah, oh, it's massive, isn't it? Heavyweight boxing now, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, especially, especially in the UK. I mean, you can see the British fans go crazy for yeah. the fights. So. Yeah, they'll be going crazy for you when you start knocking them out, David. Say that again, sorry. They'll be going crazy for you when you start knocking them out, mate. Oh yeah, most definitely, mate. They'll be seeing some devastating KOs. They'll be, they'll be uh, you'll have all them chicks jumping on you. How are you going to cope with that? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I've got to stay grounded. Yeah, you have, mate, yeah. So, um, stay focused and uh, keep them I'm away. Let that get to. That's not my prerogative, so. Yeah. You've sparred a lot of people, actually. I've, I've got a bit of a list here, but I'm going to let you take me through yeah. it. Who, who have you sparred, David, uh, from, from since you've, you've been doing, your, doing, the, doing the rounds in camps? Um, I spotted a few pros. I know. I was in camp for Hay, um, Trezora, Joyce, Paul Huey, um, Huey. Um, yeah, yeah, Huey, of course. I spotted a few boys. I, I mean, I spotted a few people. I mean, me, me being in camp with Huey in itself, I mean, Peter bringing down a lot of experienced fighters. I kind of shared the ring with them as well and got to see how they kind of moved. Yeah. What about that American guy who you were uh, padded up with? You, you were in uh, Peter's gym. Because there were you, Bunny. Cassius. Cassius. You sparred yeah. him, hadn't you? Yeah, I sparred Cassius. Um, very, very skillful fighter. And he was a big heavyweight. You know the Americans did? Yeah. They do come pretty big. He was about six foot seven, 120 kilos. So that was a good sort of move for running. Yeah. I exposed you for myself to kind of see how I, how I mix it with the big boys. But... Yeah, it was, it was all a good experience. It was all a good experience. Yeah, did you did you enjoy it up in Bolton? Yeah, definitely, man. It was such an experience. I loved it. Yeah, it yeah, it's it, yeah. Of, yeah, I loved it. I kind of started to build a friendship with the people around me as well, especially. Yeah. I remember even like going into the gyms and where we would do our strength and conditioners in certain mornings. We kind of built up a, a friendship and a momentum. So. Yeah. Did you enjoy working with Peter and and uh, all all those boys up there and that? <laughs> Did you enjoy working with Peter and Robin Reed and people like that? Yeah, both top men. I mean, Peter, I respect highly. Likewise with Robin Reed. I yeah. Mean, both took me on the pads. Both taught me a few things that I'm gonna kind of take into the game now, and I mean, I'm only humbled. Yeah, Robin uh, was Robin and Peter sent me, sent their regards to you anyway. Sent me it yesterday, so it's giving my best. Yeah, so you and Robin got on, didn't I you? Appreciate it. Say that again. Sorry. You and Robin Reed got on, didn't you? Yeah, very well. I mean, I still got Robin's number, so I mean, anything I do want to kind of learn in the game, I definitely will be giving him a call. Well, I mean, yeah. he, he did teach me a lot as well. Him and Peter both taught me a lot about the pro game. So yeah, Robin's doing I'm pad seminars now, David. I'm sorry, say that again. He wrote, Robin Reed does pad seminars. You know, he goes around doing pad seminars for a company and that. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, right, uh, oh, right. proper old school. Yeah, I definitely need a little pad session with him then. <laughs> yeah, he's he's good on pads, Robin, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. that's brilliant. So you're happy with Frank then, and you're you're all signed and ready to go. Have you had your medical? Yeah, so that's. I mean, I'm going through the whole process now, and I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be making my debut soon. Yeah, when so, are you looking at getting out? Do you know? Maybe in new season. It'll be. Um, the later part of the year. Yeah, yeah. On a, on an undercard. So. Yeah. Well, that's well, start, start the wave then. Start the KO streak. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll you'll be busy in your first year, David. Yeah, most definitely. But I mean, there's nothing I'm not ready for. Yeah. Well, you've had a good grounding, haven't you? Oh, so we say that again. You've had a good grounding. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, with all my amateur experiences, as well, I can take it into the pro game. So I mean. I'll be more than ready. That's brilliant. Well, listen, I'm not going to keep you long because it's a Sunday. And thank you for giving me 15 minutes of your time, mate. We'll have a better chat. We'll have a better chat once you've got an opponent and a date. And we'll what, we'll, what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you on channel regular, regular, and we're going to follow your story all as our cause. Is that all right, mate? No, sounds good, mate. All right. Well, listen. All the best to you and your family, mate. And have a great weekend. What's left of it? Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, David. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye, pal. Well, that's David Adelaide, 22 years old.
six foot five, sixteen stone, punches like a mule. I'm trying to think of what we can call him. Because if he starts punching people like I seen him setting about people in Peter Fury's gym, we're gonna we might need to give him a name, so People send me an email in after David Adelaide's first fight and he knocks somebody out and think of a good name. I know what I'd call him, the Iceman. David the Iceman Adelaide. I think it's got a, uh, a ring to it and uh, I wish him all the best. It's nice to see a kid who I've met probably about 18 months ago when you we were fighting Sexton. He was in camp then, and I've seen him in camp for the pool left fight. It's nice to see a kid who's amateur, and people are all anticipating when he's going to go pro, if he's going to go pro, and when he'll go, go pro, and what date he's going to go pro, and it was nice for me to say to David, listen, would you be interested in uh, speaking to Dennis? He said, yeah, Dennis spoke to him in Bulgaria. You know, Dennis is Sheffield, David's London, so... I would have said from day one that it were always going to be a London based guy who were going to sign him but I'm pleased for him and it's nice to see it all finally coming together. It strikes me as a very level headed kid, he doesn't strike me as big headed and he's not a bully, you know a lot of guys, you know they can be David's uh, size and they can be bullies, he, he's not a bully, he's very humble. Uh, he, he, he very dedicated to his training and, and it was a nice experience for me me, me and Robin and Frank Smith from, from Berry, my good friend Peter Fury and all of us to, to spend time with him in them camps and he, a proper nice kid and I'm going to follow his career uh, with anticipation and I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to following the David Adelaide journey and I'm sure my good friend Terry Chapman Dharma will be looking forward to it as well because he's uh, he, he's seen David fight as an amateur and I think he'll go all the way there's something about him I like I, th I think it's mainly attitude and the fact that he cracks really really hard and I think he would be a nailed on Pound for pound at cruiserweight, but if he's going to struggle with the weight, he should fight at a weight that you're comfortable at. But I think he will fight for a world title. I think he is that good, and uh, I wish him all the best. Now, boxing's a tough old game, and uh, let's hope that. He's got good people around him. He's with Frank Warren. Uh, I, f I forgot the guy's name, who his, who his manager is, but I think it's some, some guy who's got experience. I saw the interview on IFL, but like I said, I forgot the guy's name. But I think David Adelaide will go all the way. All the way. I said to Robin Reed, what do you think? And he says, he'll go all the way him. Now, when you've got somebody who's won a, won a bronze medal at the Olympics and... He's won WBC, WBC world titles and IBO world titles at super middleweight. He's been in with Cal Zaghi, Jeff Lacey, Frotz, Sven Ocker, Brian McGee. Robin Reed fought all them guys and they were all undefeated when Robin Reed fought, fought them. And if Robin Reed, what Robin Reed doesn't know about boxing isn't worth knowing about. If Robin Reed says David Adelaide will go all the way. He'll go all the way. I take, I, I sit back and listen and think that's good enough for me. I spoke to Dennis Hobson about it. I see Robin says he'll go all the way. He said, "Get me a meet with him in Bulgaria." Now, obviously, it didn't work out. David's made his choice, and we have to respect that and get behind him. There's no sour grapes on my part just because he's not gone with Dennis. What would I've got out of anyway? I would have got nothing except experience of putting people together I'm, I'm not like that I want David Adelaide to do well and I want all the people who support my channel and subscribe and you know we're getting an average 50,000 views a month now I want all these people who follow boxing and watch my videos to get behind David Adelaide if you can't afford a ticket to, to the fights that David's going to be on 
on Frank Warren shows, I want you to follow it on TV. If it's on a pay-per-view show, buy the pay-per-view. If it's on BT, subscribe and watch. But get behind this kid because, trust me, this kid is going to go all the way. This kid will go all the way. The only person who's going to beat him and stop him going all the way is himself. And having the wrong people around him. Now I think it's very good that he's going to stay with his amateur coach and they're going to go through this together. Because he obviously feels comfortable with him. So I think that's good. I'll, I'll be honest, I've not heard of his amateur coach. But I think it's a brave decision and we have to respect that. So just remember the name, David Adelaide. And I think we should call him David the Iceman. Adelaide, I think it's got a, right, a, a rhyme to it. David the Iceman Adelaide. I just think there's something about that name because it's just his style. I think I think it fits him perfect. Fits David perfect. So, thanks for coming on the show, David. On the show, on the on the uh, on the on the channel, and onwards and upwards. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Just a little Sunday treat there for you hardcore boxing fans, the 21 minute video, alright, so keep watching David Adelaide's career unfold, alright, you take care. Big Dave, future heavyweight champion of the world, go on son. Gyms they did. What does it make that makes it the haymaker gym? Um, it's got all of the stuff.